This audio production was made in collaboration with Audible Anarchist. The state is nothing else but this domination and exploitation regularized and systematized. We shall attempt to demonstrate it by examining the consequence of the government of the masses of the people by a minority, at first as intelligent and as devoted as you like, in an ideal state founded on a free contract. Suppose the government to be confined only to the best citizens. At first these citizens are privileged not by right but by fact. They have been elected by the people because they are the most intelligent, clever, wise, and courageous and devoted. Taken from the mass of the citizens, who are regarded as all equal, they do not yet form a class apart, but a group of men privileged only by nature, and for that reason singled out for election by the people. Their number is necessarily very limited, for in all times and countries the number of men endowed with qualities so remarkable that they automatically command the unanimous respect of a nation is, as experience teaches us, very small. Therefore, under pain of making a bad choice, the people will always be forced to choose its rulers from amongst them. Here, then, is society divided into two categories, if not yet to say two classes, of which one, composed of the immense majority of the citizens, submits freely to the government of its elected leaders. The other, formed of a small number of privileged natures, recognized and accepted as such by the people, and charged by them to govern them. Dependent on popular election, they are at first distinguished from the mass of the citizens only by the very qualities which recommended them to their choice, and are naturally the most devoted and useful of all. They do not yet assume to themselves any privilege, any particular right, except that of exercising, in so far as the people wish it, the special functions with which they have been charged, for the rest by their manner of life, by the conditions and means of their existence, they do not separate themselves in any way from all the others, so that a perfect equality continues to reign among all. Can this equality be long maintained? We claim that it cannot, and nothing is easier to prove it. Nothing is more dangerous for man's private morality than the habit of command. The best man, the most intelligent, disinterested, generous, pure, will infallibly and always be spoiled at his trade. Two sentiments inherent in power never fail to produce this demoralization. They are contempt for the masses and the overestimation of one's own merits. The masses, a man says to himself, recognizing their incapacity to govern on their own account, have elected me their chief. By that act they have publicly proclaimed their inferiority and my superiority. Among this crowd of men, recognizing hardly any equals of myself, I am alone capable of directing public affairs. The people have need of me. They cannot do without my services, while I, on the contrary, can get along all right by myself. They, therefore, must obey me for their own security, and in condescending to obey them, I am doing them a good turn. Is here not something in all that to make a man lose his head, and his heart as well, and become mad with pride? It is thus that power and the habit of command become for even the most intelligent and virtuous men a source of aberration, both intellectual and moral. This has been a production of Audible Anarchist. You can find more Audible Anarchist on YouTube.